Hello everybody, Jeffrey Dickinson here, thanks for watching. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is uh, take some more time to continue uh, discussing objections to Norcross's famous puppy argument. So um, the puppy argument, you recall, it goes something like this. Since um, Fred's behavior is morally wrong, then so is the behavior of those who consume factory farm food. And the reason for this is that, remember, Fred's behavior is really, really bad because he is basically torturing puppies so that way he can get this um, this hormone from them that will allow him to enjoy chocolate, right? And um, that thought would be that um, the behavior of those who consume factory farm food, they're supporting an industry that treats animals on a par with how Fred treats um, those puppies. Now, tradi uh, traditional challenges to Norcross involve um, claim that there's a moral difference between Fred's behavior and the behavior of those who consume factory farm food. We've already talked about one objection that involved thinking about the directness-indirectness relationship. So Fred's directly related to the suffering of the puppies, right? Whereas the average consumer of factory farm food is not directly related, right? And we respond, we saw Norcross's response to that, where we just consider um, a variation of the, of the puppy case where Fred actually pays someone um, to inflict the suffering on the puppies, okay? And then the second objection that we considered involved thinking about um, the fact that Fred can um, by himself as a single um, consumer of the Kokomone can decrease the production levels of the Kokomone, whereas the average consumer of factory farm food all by herself can't um, decrease the production levels of factory farm food. Why? Because factory farm, um, the factory farm food industry is big agribusiness and isn't sensitive to um, a single consumer's uh, choices. And we saw that um, uh, what Norcross um, uh, re replied by doing was saying like, look, imagine a case where um, Kokomo production is big agribusiness, it looks like in, um, individual consumers would do something morally wrong and thus be morally responsible for uh, consuming um, um, the factory farm in Kokomo, which involves thinking about, which, which involves, excuse me, um, uh, puppies being uh, put in factory farms. Okay? So um, we also saw a second reply uh, by Norcross there is just that. Um, uh, it's false to assume that there's nothing an individual consumer can do to um, to decrease production levels. It just turns out that what an individual consumer can do is quite small, and that is hasten the bringing about of the critical mass that's required for uh, decreasing the production levels of Kokomo. Okay, so um, those two objections: indirectness objection, big agribusiness objection, um, and then the third objection we'll consider uh, is called the doctrine of double effect objection. So here. The thought would be Fred, he uh, directly intends the suffering that he's inflicting on the puppies. Why? Um, because he's using the puppies as uh, a mere means to, um, to have the Kokomo produced so he can enjoy chocolate. So he's directly intending this bad thing. Um, uh, in the case of consumers of factory farm food, they are not directly intending the suffering of the animals. Um, they see the suffering um, as a side effect, a foreseen consequence of other things they directly intend, like getting their, um, uh, their food um, uh, inexpensively, um, and being able to feed more people with, um, with uh, um, inexpensive meat, uh, animal products that are out there. So the th idea here is that, um, or the idea behind this objection is that there's a moral difference, it seems, between directly intending something that's bad, and that's what's claimed is true with Fred, and um, there being bad side effects or um, bad foreseen consequences of what one directly intends. Um, and so this is the basic, um, uh, this is developed um, in the principle known as the doctrine of double effect. So the doctrine of double effect is uh, maintaining that there is this important moral difference between uh, bringing about um, badness as of what one directly intends as opposed to um, perhaps allowing or bringing about badness as a side effect um, or merely foreseen consequence of what one directly intends. Um, so according to the doctrine of double effect, it's always gonna be morally wrong to directly intend something um, bad, okay? Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't allow or you can't bring about something that's bad as a mere side effect of what's uh, directly intended. And so the objection is gonna, right, is gonna say that there's a moral difference in um, um, what's intended in um, thinking about Fred and the average consumer of uh, factory farm food.
Okay, so the doctrine of double effect is invoked. That's why it's called the doctrine of double effect um, objection. And so what uh, Norcross wants to claim in response to this objection um, is that let's just suppose the doctrine of double effect uh, is true as a principle, that there is this relevant moral difference um, in uh, what, we're inten what we directly intend and what we um, merely foresee as a consequence of what we directly intend. Um, well, there's a necessary condition that has to be satisfied in order for the doctrine of double effect to apply properly. And the necessary condition is that the, um, the good of what's directly intended has to outweigh the bad of what's merely foreseen. So if we're, if we're allowing or bringing about some bad side effect, right, then, um, then what we directly intend, right, has to be something that's good, but what results from what we directly intend has to outweigh the bad of the side effect of what's directly intended. Okay, so that's how um, that that's a necessary condition for the doctrine of double effect. So there are other necessary conditions, but that's one of them. Um, and what Norcross wants to claim is that it's false that um, the good of what's intended or directly intended um, um, by consuming fast food, farm food, namely, um, I'm getting food inexpensively and being able to food, uh, feed more people with respect with respect to that inexpensive um, uh, animal products, those inexpensive animal products. Um, outweighs the um, the suffering that comes to the animals that we're consuming. He wants to say, in fact, it's false. It's this: the suffering outweighs um, the um, uh, the intention, the, the 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 good results from our direct intention to consume food inexpensively. Okay, so uh, uh, that's Norcross's um, uh, first reply. Second reply is to is to challenge the doctrine of double effect itself, but we'll set that aside. Uh, we don't need to get into that uh, in this video. Okay, so um, that's a doctrine of double effect objection, and what Norcross's reply is that, look, the necessary condition for um, invoking the doctrine of double effect, uh, it just isn't going to hold, right? Okay, um, the next challenge to consider is, um, I'll, we'll, we'll just call for our purposes, the puppies are more valuable um, objection. More valuable than what? Than farm animals. So puppies are more valuable than the animals like um, cows, pigs, and chickens, et cetera, et cetera, that we have in factory farms. So the way the objection is gonna go is apply to the argument, Fred's behavior is wrong, right? Because puppies are really valuable um, and the, um, the behavior of those who consume factory farm food, right? It's not, um, um, it's not morally wrong. Why? Because um, cows, um, pigs, chickens, et cetera, et cetera, right? They lack the kind of value that puppies have. Okay. Now, um, the first thing to, to have in mind uh, or think about is what's going to account for the difference in value here. Well, some might say that puppies are just more intelligent or something like that, or they're more loyal to, to, to human beings, and that um, gives them a leg up in terms of value over um, the factory farm mm -hmm. animals. Um, and those are the ones that Norcross considers. Um, in his reply to this, to this objection. So there's gonna be several lines of replies. Um, the first is just to just go ahead and assume um, the premise that uh, puppies do have more value than, um, than, than farm animals or factory farm animals. Uh, and then consider revising the Fred case to try to meet the objection. Suppose um, Fred, he's well aware of um, uh, the fact that um, that puppies are, are valuable and, and farm animals um, aren't as valuable. And so he wants to try to um, do the best he can. So he actually goes out and finds the puppies that are like not very intelligent compared to the other puppies, not very loyal right, to human beings as other puppies are. So then their value levels right, would, um, would be less. They'd be on a par with the um, value levels of the, the cows, the pigs, the chickens, et cetera, et cetera. So he's using dumb and disloyal. Uh, puppies, as it were. Um, would Fred's behavior in that case still be wrong? Norcross says, of course it would be wrong. Okay, so it looks like um, um, even if Fred's using puppies that have value levels on a par with farm animals, the behavior would still be wrong. Okay, so that's the first reply. Suppose, right, um, that the premise, the key premise, right, of the objections, right, that there's a value, that there's a relevant value difference. The second reply involves continuing to hold um, that, that premise uh, and arguing that, and, and, and argue that um, 
the 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 difference in value between puppies and farm animals right isn't so great as to warrant such a difference in treatment right um, so uh, if it turns out that it's true that puppies have more value than farm animals um, surely it's not the case that puppies are so much more valuable than farm animals that um, that it's okay to treat cows pigs chickens etc cetera, etc cetera, right in, in the ways we do in factory farms um, right um, yet we think that we have to treat puppies so much better, right? So the, the difference in value, right, isn't enough to account for the, um, the ethics of the difference in treatment, according to Noah Cross, okay. So that's the second reply. So we continue to assume the main premise of the objection, that puppies are more valuable than farm animals, but then say that the conclusion still doesn't follow. Okay, the conclusion being that, uh, that there's a moral difference between Fred's behavior and those who consume factory farm foods behavior. Um, the last reply is just to say, look, it's likely false, right, that there's a relevant moral difference um, between, value difference, excuse me, between um, puppies and farm animals. It's going to be difficult to figure out well, what's, what objective property do puppy, puppies have that farm animals lack um, that would make it the case that we can uh, put farm animals, the ones that we typically do, cows, pigs, and chickens, in factory farms, but um, um, but right, keep puppies out, okay? So um, so that's the, the third uh, reply to the objection. So in sum here that we've gone over uh, several objections, um, haven't we, to the, um, to, to the puppy argument, um, there's the indirectness objection, there's the big agribusiness objection, um, there's a doctrine of double effect objection, and there's a puppies are more valuable objection. Um, there are others that Norcross considers, but these are the big four that I wanted to discuss uh, in this video. So it looks like what Norcross can uh, claim is, like, unless there are other objections that are forthcoming, then it looks like his argument um, against uh, consuming factory farm food holds. Okay? And if that's true, then consumers, individual consumers, have a responsibility to refrain from consuming factory farm food. Okay, so um, are there any other kinds of objections that Norcross doesn't consider uh, in his text that might be worth considering? Um, I think there are, uh, and um, I've written a paper uh, to develop those objections um, and then respond on behalf of Norcross because I think that ultimately he has responses to um, the objections that I give, not because um, um, opposed to his conclusion. I think his conclusion is right. And I just think that there are other objections that he doesn't consider that are worth considering and responding to. So um, some might say things like, um, well, the way um, the, um, the Fred case, or the way the pup case goes is um, Fred, he's consuming the chocolate merely for the sake of pleasure, but people, they consume uh, factory farm food to get their nutrients. And um, so that's going to turn out to be a moral difference, it's argued. So uh, we can call this a, the not just pleasure objection, if you will. And my reply to that on behalf of Norcross is to say, well, we can, we can revise the case where Fred is actually consuming um, the meat that comes from um, the puppies as well. So he's not just consuming the, the Kokomo, which is a meat product, but he's also going to be eating them, right, in order to satisfy some of his nutritional needs okay, for whatever reason, that's the case. Um, I think we're still going to say that Fred's behavior is wrong, right, um, even though Fred, in this case, happens to need um, some of the, um, some of the protein uh, from the, uh, from the puppies that he has in his puppy mill, okay. So that's just, you know, one, um, one kind of line of reply, and there are others that we could consider, but I'll, I'll stop there. I just wanted to say that I know that some, um, some of my students and, and others who, who've heard Norcross's argument want to make um, this objection. So I highlight it and I respond to it on behalf of, of Norcross. And it involves just really revising that Fred case to try to meet the objection. And I think that, um, that he can easily do that. So um, my um, paper doesn't really add too much that's new uh, to Norcross. It tries to strengthen him by weakening some of the assumptions that he makes in the original uh, puppy case. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Um, that concludes my discussion of the puppy argument. Thanks for watching, everybody.